Hey everyone, this is Matt Perez with SolidBox, and today we're going to talk about Power Surfacing 2.0 Beta. Now, I've already done a few videos on this talking about constraining to existing SolidWorks geometry, and they were pretty much two different spectrums, two different ends of what a user would do. We had a teapot example where we had to make a spout and constrain it to a split face. So we were dealing with a very simple or basic geometry there, a revolved part, so the curvature was consistent. Then we dealt with a Pagani Zonda fender, which is a little bit more complicated. It was a surface model in SolidWorks, and we had to sort of reshape or, or redo part of the fender. So this was a more complicated example, much harder to do in SolidWorks than the teapot spout. And what I want to talk about now is a third example, talking about the same functionalities, but applying it to a different model. We're going to be talking about a golf club driver. Now this is a very interesting case because the model, at least in, in nature, is very organic, very free flowing, very push and pull type geometry that we would want to do with sub desurfacing. The problem is there are specific criteria. Faces need certain geometry and we need to constrain it to the club. And these are things that were hard to do with sub D modeling inside of SolidWorks when we were talking about previous releases like 1.4. So what I want to do is touch on these new tools and how we can apply them to this specific type of model. So what we have is a revolved shaft of our club and then we have this face model. Now this is a face model that has some specific geometry that's needed for the face of this driver. Now I should note that I'm not using any specific geometry to design an actual club. I just want to note that we have a face that is used to define the geometry. So at this point I'm going to create a primitive and I'm going to create a box. And what I want to do is I want to shrink this down just a bit. We're going to keep the width at 9 and we need to really bring the height down. I'm going to bring the height down to 4. And to start with I'm going to leave the length, width, and height segments at 1. And I'm doing this for a good reason. I don't want to induce too much curvature and cause problems this early in the model. So at this point in time, I just move it around a little bit in space and get it close to where I need it to be for my model. Now if we have to scale anything or, or redo any of the sizes, this is a very good time. We can move some points around, we can tweak some points and get it closer to the shape. And once we have it pretty close to the shape we want, let's start deleting. So I'm going to take the front face of this primitive, this box primitive, and I'm simply going to delete it. And what that does for me is it gives me an open edge that I can now constrain to this import reference. So from our power surfacing tab, we'll select import reference. We'll grab the existing SOLIDWORKS face that we want. And now we have this face that we can start to use for a few references. I'm going to use my loop selection, grab this loop, and I'm going to constrain it to an edge. So one thing you'll notice is that the geometry may or may not be ideal in this case. You see that it doesn't really look very good on this bottom edge. And that's really because this bottom face, the specific face, needs to be pulled down just a little bit. And that helps ease the geometry. We can also go in and we can add a lot more control by adding more edges, more insert loops. And we can pull this stuff around and get the shape just how we need it. But you can see that using that existing geometry, just pushing and pulling some numbers, grabbing these points, moving them around, we now have a pretty good shape using the face that we've already created in here. If we need to add more detail, I can use the A key by hovering over an edge and I can add more loops or I can select loops and I can use the insert loop option and add multiples in here to change the geometry. Now in this case, I'm actually gonna use the A key and I'm gonna put a loop that is actually in this direction. Now the reason I want to do that is because this gives me a way to tweak the sizes just a little bit. We can tweak the midline of this part and get a more squared off edge. We can also of course move individual edges as needed, but we have to pay close attention to what that's doing to our surrounding geometry. We can also hold down the A key, put an edge close to here, and we can grab that loop and we can scale it up in 3D. So that way we can control the entry and exit to this specific face here. So now we have a control edge here. We can look at it in a few different views, grab these points, we can move them around, grab these points, move them around, and get a pretty good idea on a generic shape that we want for this club. So you can just imagine, if you've done this before in SOLIDWORKS, how much time this actually takes to create a shape because you have so much freedom over actually moving it around, pulling and pushing, tweaking some of these points, and figuring out just how you want this to look. All right, well, let's look at the idea of maybe adding a little bit more control. 
So I'm going to add one more loop here. And with this loop, I'm going to select a few edges. So I'm just going to select these edges here. And what I want to do is control the edge weight. Now if I give it a harder edge, you can see that we're starting to induce a little bit of extra curvature here. I'm going to select all of these edges and pull them down. And these other edges here, I'll grab them and I'll give them a little bit less weight. And what we've done is we've now induced a little bit of extra curvature. We've added a, a harder edge to this. And you can see that we've controlled the geometry just a little bit more. Now, if for some reason you don't want this, if you want to do these types of features inside SolidWorks, a lot of them can be a, a little bit easier to do on the back end using the SolidWorks functionality, but not everything. A lot of times you want to get that geometry just right in here before you move back over to SolidWorks. So I, I like the shape. I think it's pretty good. I want to do one more thing on this back edge. I want to flatten that a little bit. So I can do that with a few different things. I can use my alignment tools and I can iron that face to make it flat on the back end. So what that does is it pushes it in just a little bit. Then maybe I wanna grab this edge and I wanna bring it in just, just a hair and get that shape just right. All right, at this point in time, you're probably wondering, okay, well, how are we gonna constrain it to that club? What do we do in this case? Well, we can take this edge, we can extrude it, and at the same time, we can shrink it down and once we've done that, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to make that a hard edge, select that face, again, go back to my alignment tools and flatten it. And now I can take this face and I can move it around. If I want to, I can grab these two external edges and I can scale them in relation to each other, getting it closer to round. I can then select this face. We can rotate that face. We can move it around closer to where we need. And then we can go ahead and import some new references. So I'm going to import this reference edge. So now we have two import reference sets, this face and this face. Now if we pull this face forward, of course the geometry is getting a little interesting because this face is, is sort of in the way, but we can just move this entire face up. I want to take my loop selection, select this entire loop, and you notice that it's not really selecting it properly. Well, that's okay. We can still do this manually. We'll move some things around. And then we'll manually select these outside loops. Once I've got all four, I can constrain to my edge. Now, because this constrains to the closest edge or the closest points, you can see what we've done is we've avoided this reference here and we've pulled it into our new reference. Now, even though we've constrained it here, we might still want to go ahead and pull some faces out very quickly and easily we can just grab that face pull it out and get that geometry just right now doing this inside of SolidWorks especially with the small tweaks if we need to move some of these components around could potentially be a nightmare you could end up with some very bad geometry but I was able to push pull move things around and make a pretty nice shape here if I go ahead and I hide my edges you can see that I've got some nice geometry here that can start the rest of this model. If I need to add some details, some threads in the bottom for weights or whatever the case might be. But now I have that original face, my surface fill. If I hide that, you can see I've got an open surface model that I've created with my power body. If I turn the edges on, this might be a little bit easier to see. It's a hollow body. Now, if I hide this piece here, this actually has a capped face on it. So all we need to do is we need to show our filled surface go to our surface models and knit these two together. And now we've created a knitted model of this component. Now, if you guys have any questions about this functionality or any of the functionality in power surfacing, please shoot me a line, matt at mysolidbox.com. And thanks for watching.